Guys, we've got a special treat in for you. We are doing the blue fractured granite epoxy kit two ways with nothing but stone coat additives. Learn every step along the way right now. Stay tuned and enjoy the video. It's gonna come with some purple mountain, violet, pearl, blue earth, sky blue, black, a little bit of gold metallic, and white and black dye. And you can see I already have my colors mixed and they're ratioed out. So my base colors are my bigger cups, my accent colors are my smaller cups. That way you don't have too much wasted epoxy. I'm gonna start with a base color down. I'm gonna randomly apply some of my black dye and then I'm gonna add some black metallic. And then we're gonna bring in our accent colors and really bring this bad boy to life some purple mountain. You could really see that purple there in the black now. I think I just poured too much, but I like the way it looks in the black. It looks awesome. And a little bit of this violet pearl. Come back with the hair more metallic. And you could use your gloved hands. You could use a magic trowel, but we're just creating a base down on our board at this point. I've mixed this epoxy for about two minutes with a paddle mixer and a drill. And with Stone Coat Epoxy, the open working time is extensive. You can make countertops, shower walls, epoxy floors. Oh my gosh, that violet pearl looks so pretty in there. What I did with some of that gold metallic powder is I put a full bag into about 20 ounces of isopropyl alcohol. Then I'm gonna mix that on after I lay down my blues. It really adds a cool feature. Time to bring in my blues. I'm gonna do the same thing. And I'm not sending all my colors yet. I'm saving sun because we're gonna come layer. And after you hand meld, you could come bring back other colors and really bring this piece to life. Where's that royal blue? This dark blue is real pretty too. Actually a little bit of black here as well because you want a little bit of dark spots. Same deal guys, I'm just gonna take this hand and start melding these colors together right on my project. There's really no fancy tools needed. I'm just using the tips of my fingers. I'm not coming in here and using the whole palm of my hand. I'm just wanting to get these colors to flow and meld a little bit with one another. Whew, it's already looking good. So now I'm gonna give it more dark section and lighter sections. So come back here again with some of this royal blue and black metallic. You can also guys pre-tint your metallic colors. I've made a dark Crater Lake by taking a full bag of Crater Lake and a full bag of black mica and mix them together before going into the epoxy. And it does a really good job of darkening the Crater Lake down. And when we come back with some alcohol, this whole piece will really come to life. But at this point too, folks, we have tons of time to get this countertop to look the way we want it to. I'm coming in with a big section of blue earth. So to remove the air incorporated into the epoxy, we use a blowtorch. Just torch the surface. I'm gonna make a couple fracture lines now here using this black dye, get my epoxy to drip and then bring it over. And I'll bring a little bit of white in here just to soften up some of this blue. It does not need much. This white really goes far and I'm just gonna barely meld that in. And I just touch it a little bit and then I get the heck out of there. So this is our gold mica powder mixed into 91% isopropyl. And I'm just gonna miss this a little bit. The gold adds a visual interest I hit it with a little bit of the gold and then I follow it up with a just plain old clear. See how that just sells those colors apart. All those colors that we've now layered come to life. It looks pretty. So now you can kind of just level up as you see fit. Walk it over and we're gonna come mist it again too, but look at that. All right, I'm doing more white in here. I'm getting excited. You don't have to be in a rush doing this, guys. Take your time. And if you know you're doing a, a real intricate piece like this that takes a lot of hand melding and little little details, just mix a little epoxy up at a time. So because I re-meld that with my hand, I'm coming back with that alcohol to make that more organic. Uh, right here is a wash coat, guys. Why we do this is it helps the exotic pour flow well. Epoxy goes where epoxy has been, a lot like water. So just push it nice and tight. All I want is that, I want it to be wet. I don't need a puddle. So exotic pour, baby. We're pouring in tinted epoxy colors into the bucket randomly. Wow. Here you go, gold. You're going down to the bottom. So we're gonna, I'm gonna pour one big mass. And the cool thing about an exotic pour is countertop's complete. Unless you wanna start leveling it up, dragging some veins, stuff like that. But there's enough material on here and I've installed my tape dam because I've poured about five ounces per square foot compared to my three ounces per square foot. If I had to take them on this piece and I waited for it to thicken and then I peeled it, there's not enough mass 
to now push that thickened epoxy over those edges. So only apply the tape dam when you're going an exotic pour or applying over four ounces per square foot on your countertop. Cool, I'm gonna torch that off. So because I'm working on my own piece here that's not installed in a customer's home, I could tilt it. You aren't gonna need to do this to every piece. I could have let that flow, but it also gives you some unique movement and flow on the project. And you can see here, because we have greased epoxy, this is helping all that flow. It's gonna come cover. I'm gonna grab me some alcohol here. I think I'm gonna hit the gold on top of that too, and then follow it with a clear. Just a little bit of gold. Oh man, that's sick. That is epic. So you don't wanna keep cramming alcohol on. I'm putting barely any like, that's what I'm doing. I'm not doing this. That would atomize it and be very small. It wouldn't give you really any effect at all. So just little quarter turns because you want those bigger droplets. I'm digging what that gold did. I'm gonna do more. I don't like the droplets like this, but when I hit it with the clear, that fractures up those droplets. Winning. I thought this one was gonna be a winner, like my favorite, but now the old exotic pour coming through with a W. I'm digging this very subtle purple in here. That's a win. All right, I'm gonna do some gold back onto this bad boy because I need to mist this piece again because I brought this big gold vein. I'm gonna add a little bit more of this gold. Uh, just a very subtle detail that catches the light beautifully. And I also wanna fracture up that gold line so it's not like I just drew a Sharpie line on there. You can see, man, uh, isopropyl alcohol is a go-to epoxy technique to get you out of the woods. If your piece isn't uh, to your liking, grab the isopropyl alcohol. This is not ready to pool, so I already know it's not gonna look good but you're gonna come up here to the corner of your project because all this epoxy here on your corner, when you peel that tape down, is gonna flow. So if you mess up right here, it's not gonna show, but I dip my finger in and I peel up. And if this epoxy stays on my finger, I'll pull it up and it'll, it'll still be on here, still be on here. Even at this point, I know I'm ready, but it drips off really quick. It's quite fluid. I'll also come in and push that and see how long it takes for that epoxy to come back and self-level. It's quite fluid still. So. Just kind of keep checking that. Come back in an hour and it'll be thicker. You come back in two hours and be like, whoop, okay, we're good. Uh, and then you are off to the races. Thanks for watching from all of us here at Stone Coat Epoxy. You got this and we'll see you on the next video. Stone.